organized church. Let's talk about the name of your city, my friends. Today is the day of your salvation. God bless you, gentlemen. I pray that you have a good day. It's Valentine's Day, which means love is in the air. We're getting ready to open our pocketbooks and buy flowers and chocolate and dinner. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the manna from heaven. He is the river of life. He wants to feed your soul, my friend. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It's not the nicest day in the world, but it's still a nice day. The breeze feels very good. And I pray that the Lord would bless you today. So many different people from all over the world, different cultures, different ethnicities. Diversity is a very beautiful thing. God created us in his image. And even in our differences, we have a lot of similarities. God put us on this earth to love and to be loved, to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. So I'm here today to invite you to be a part of the kingdom of God, to be born again. The Bible says that unless we are born again, we will not inherit eternal life, that we must be born of water and of the Spirit. Choose this day who you will serve, Christ Church. The kingdom of God has come near to you. The time is late, and I want to encourage you. If you have a Bible at home, read your Bible. This is... From what I've been told, this is a Christian city, but it's falling away from the ways of God. It's turning away from those Christian principles it once knew. Christian bookstores are shutting down and going out of business. We're trying to change the name of the city even. Why is that? Because even the name of Jesus offends us. Christ means Messiah. He is our salvation. He is our Lord. He is our King, our God. He is everything. He's the answer to every question your soul has ever longed for. God is faithful. And if you run to Him, He will be faithful to you. He will not deny you. He will not leave you stranded or abandoned. He's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's the anchor for your soul. The Bible says that He will not leave you nor forsake you. If you begin a relationship with God, He will be faithful, my friends. The Bible says very clearly that unless we repent, we will perish. Jesus himself said this. We must repent for our sins. Now, repentance has become a very dirty word. Repentance is something that we hear, and I would say that 95% of secular society doesn't understand what this word means. I would say even a huge portion of the church doesn't understand what repentance means. Repentance is when we change our heart, we change our mind. We say, I'm going this way towards sin, I want to change the way I'm living, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to walk towards the face of God. We're changing the way that we're going. God bless you. There's some Christians over here. We're changing the direction of our life. But see, this is how we break it down. God must draw us to himself. When God draws us, we have to respond. We hear the gospel. We make a decision, we respond. We repent by changing our heart, our mind, we turn around. But see, the problem is, we still have no ability to live a way that's pleasing unto God. This is where the supernatural happens. We're not yet born again, but by repentance and by us responding to the gospel, stay in front of me, brother. By us responding to the gospel, we then cry out to God, He puts a spirit in us. That's where the born again part takes place. That's where God seals our spirit with His. I heard a sermon yesterday that was very powerful. Where it said that when Jesus spoke to His disciples, He said, Render unto Caesars that which is Caesars, and render unto God that which is God's. And what we don't understand is that a coin that was Caesars at the time was stamped with His, with his, uh, with his face. Just like our coins. A lot of times it's stamped with a queen or it's stamped with... You know, previous uh, leaders and presidents. That's how it is in the United States. But, my friend, when you have been stamped by the seal of God, when you belong to the Lord, He will stamp your soul with His own insignia. He will seal your spirit with His. Now, here's the, here's the, the crazier part. We have all, in a way, been stamped by the Lord. Because when God originally created us, the Bible says He created us in His own image. That means deep inside of us, we all have been stamped by the Lord, even through our DNA. We have a longing inside of us. There's a, a deep 
part of us that's missing and only that which can be fulfilled by the Spirit of the Lord. Only that which can be fulfilled by relationship with Jesus Christ. We must be born again. When you cry out to God, He puts His Spirit in you. He will seal your spirit with His until the day of redemption. And then we can become a slave of righteousness. In our sin, we are slaves of sin. We're slaves of the darkness. We're slaves of our own addictions, our own evil desires. But God can find us in the midst of our weariness and our hurt, our brokenness. He can pick us up. He can lift us from any situation. He'll breathe life into our soul. You're doing great. Thanks, He'll breathe life into our soul and He will set us on a rock and He'll give us hope when we need it. He will enable you. He will empower you. He will give you the provision that you need. My friend, do you know Jesus? The time is late. The night is far spent. Judgment is coming on the world. We're sleeping. We must, we must wake up. We must wake up. Wake up, my friends. See the truth for what it is. We say, oh, how do we know that the Bible is true? But prophecy after prophecy throughout time has been fulfilled. God has proven himself time and again that if you run to him, he will be faithful. He has given us the future. 2,000 years ago, the best friend of Jesus Christ, John, was exiled to an island called Patmos. And he wrote of a coming day when you could not buy, sell, or trade except you have a mark on your hand or your forehead. How could he have foreseen it 2,000 years ago that even now today we are still moving very quickly to a cashless society? In Sweden, they're getting microchips in their hands. In America, they're getting microchips in their hands. It's becoming more prevalent. We're cooking the frog slowly but surely. We're moving towards this digital cashless society. It must be done slowly to gain public acceptance. But it is coming, my friend. And one day you will not be able to buy, sell, or trade unless you have this mark. And the Bible says that if you have this mark, you will be doomed forever. Once you get this mark, there's no hope for repentance. There's no hope for being born again. Because I believe it will change the very DNA inside of you. And it will somehow separate you from God. Scientists have discovered what's called a God gene. It's where, I, I don't know all the, 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 the details of it, but it is where we can... We seek God. We find God. It's where we have that innate nature to want to be close to a higher power. And they're beginning to manipulate DNA and the genes in our body to change the way that our minds think, to manipulate hormones and chemical releases. This is what the mind-altering medication does. So they're changing the way that our very mind and our body works. And one day they're going to be able to separate us completely from that desire that we have, our innate desire, where we've been stamped by the, by the image of God. That innate desire that we have to draw near to our Creator. One day it's going to be cut off completely, and I believe that it will be through the mark of the beast. But we have a time now where repentance has come near to us. Where God is drawing us near to himself. And he's saying, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you for my burden is easy. And my, uh, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Excuse me. Jesus is saying, come to me. Are we tired of drinking? We're tired of partying and smoking and running the roads. We're tired of doing all these things that might feel good for a moment. But inside our soul is grieving. We're grieving. Longing for something deeper, something more fulfilling. Every time I get a new phone, it's really, really awesome, and I love it for about a couple of months. And then before you know it, there's coming out another cell phone. I want that one. It's envy and greed and lust of the, the, the flesh and the pride of life, and it's eating us up. We're moving through society like robots, constantly searching for something more. But the more we get, we're still so empty, and it's never enough come down a little bit it's never enough we're never going to have enough because the deep dark longing inside of you is eaten up with sin and only God can light that darkness only God can breathe life into your soul and set you on a rock Jesus is the way do you know him one day we will die death is imminent it's coming it's going to stare us in the face it's going to stare us in the face uh, each and every one of us in our own time and when we die, when our, earth, uh, when our earthly existence passes away and to the dust we return, we're going to stand before our Creator, each and every one of us. 
Your mom and your daddy's not going to be there. Your pastor's not going to be there to verify that you were at church every Sunday paying your tithes. That won't get you into heaven, my friends. We'll be naked in our sin. We'll stand before the judgment of God. We'll stand before his throne. And he'll either say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into my kingdom. Enter into my rest. Here's rewards. We're going to have a banquet. We're going to have a party. He's going to give out awards for those who have served him. That doesn't get you into heaven, but there is favor from God in heaven. Eternal riches and glory for those who faithfully served him. And these are the type of uh, riches that don't fade away. He says, I've gone to prepare a place for you. He's prepared a place for his people in eternity. And my friends, these are not houses that rot over time. These are not riches that fade away and collect in the dust. These are not buildings that are crumble one day. These are eternal eternal rewards that you can enjoy for everlasting to everlasting. But if he doesn't know you, he's going to say, depart from me. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. The goats are those who, maybe they went to church, maybe you paid your tithes, maybe you know your pastor's phone number by heart, but you never really knew who Jesus was. You never really served him. Your heart never really belonged to him. He's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I don't want that for you. I don't want it for anyone. That's why I'm out here on the street standing in faith, pleading with your soul because I don't want anyone to perish. It is not the will of God that anyone should perish. But we have free will. You're not a robot. You can choose whatever you want. You can go your own way, choose your own path. Destruction stares you in the face. And a lot of times we want it because sin tastes delicious. But it's never going to satisfy you, gentlemen. It's never going to satisfy you. I'm here to tell you that God loves you. And he does have a desire for a relationship with you. And we can laugh. We can continue. If you're watching this, Ryan Kittle. Ryan Kittle, I just found your doppelganger. This guy looks just like you. Preach, brother. Jesus. Do you know him? Or is it just a name that you say when you get mad? Why is it that the name of Jesus is the only name that we curse, we take in vain, we blaspheme? It's the only name that has power. And the demons, they don't like that name. And a lot of us are carrying demons through life. Those demons, they want to curse the name of God. They want to go against the ways of God. And the unholiness, the unrighteousness, the sin, and the weight of darkness is eating us up. Don't let the demons drag you to hell, my friends. There is a way which seems good, but the end thereof is death. Our children are precious. Our children are innocent. We need to teach them morality. And the only way that they're going to see that morality is through the testimony of your life. We can tell our children to be a good person, but if they witness us being a terrible person, they're not going to turn out good. We're going to wonder what happens. The Bible says, train your children up in the way that they should go. Come down a little bit on the... No. On this... Yeah, there you go. The Bible says, train your children up in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. They'll know. Deep inside of them, they will know that there is something that mommy and daddy has inside of their soul that teaches them how to show love, compassion, kindness, grace, mercy. They see that love in your life, that care and concern that you have for other people. And it's going to want them, it's going to make them want to have the same thing. But oftentimes our children witness us walk by the homeless, walk by those in need, and we feel nothing, we do nothing, we go straight to the Gucci store, we buy new clothes or purses or whatever it is that we're buying, while people are suffering real need all around us, we're not feeling, we're not doing anything, we've become numb and blind. We have to let God wake us up. Jesus is the way, he's king, and when he lives inside of you, his love will live inside of you. And people will begin to see the love that you demonstrate. You'll begin to love like he loves, walk like he walks, talk like he talks. The world will witness his gentleness through the testimony of your life. You know, standing out here preaching is one thing, but it's what you do day to day, minute to minute, moment to moment that matters. Anybody can preach. Anybody can pretend. But it's the way that we treat each other. In the one-on-one -on -one interactions. Jesus. He loves you. He cares about you. God committed his love for us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for you. He died on a cross. He really did. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He is alive. 
He is not dead. He's not in the ground. His bones are nowhere to be found. There's something that happened on that day, my friends. Come back around. Keep me in the frame, brother. Yeah, sorry, man. There's something that happened that day. When he rose from the dead, he had 11 followers left. You remember Judas? Judas uh, betrayed him, so he hung himself. He's gone. There's 11 people left now. They were hiding in the upper room. They were hiding because they were fearing for their life. The Romans and the Pharisees, they put Jesus on a cross. But Jesus went there willingly, gave his life willingly for you and for me. And they were hiding for their lives. They were fearful that the Romans were going to come and get them. But something happened that brought traumatic change, that transformed their thinking, transformed their Transform them from scared little men into bold, fierce warriors for God. Something changed. They witnessed the risen Christ. They witnessed the King of Glory back from the grave. The tomb, the stone of that tomb rolled away. They witnessed Jesus back to life. They put his hand, their fingers in his in his hands, his nail pierced hands. They put their, their, their fingers through his feet where they put him on the cross, they witnessed the risen Savior, and it changed everything about them. Depending on who you talk to, 10 out of the, those 11 men eventually died for their faith. They were martyrs. I believe John was the only one who died of natural causes. He got boiled in oil, though, as, uh, the, what they, from what they say. Now, some people believe that even John was a martyr and eventually died for his faith. God is faithful. Choose this day who you will serve. There is only one name unto heaven given to men whereby we can be saved. His name is Jesus. From the ends of the earth we cry out. It's from the book of Psalms. We ask God to lead us to the rock that's higher than I. Do we have anxiety today, my friends? Fear, worry, despair, discouragement. Heaviness eating up our soul. Run to the King of Glory. He'll set you on a rock. He'll give you something to stand on, to lean on, to believe in. And you can be unmoved, unchanged. Because if you know that God is in control of your life, if you know that God is leading you, guiding you, in control of you, there's no room for anxiety. What reason do we have to fear if we know that God is protecting us? What reason do we have? To feel afraid of what's going to happen to us when we know that God is in control of every moment of every day for the rest of our life. I'm inviting you. Read your Bible. Trust in the King of glory. He is alive. He is moving in our midst. Even His Spirit is moving in, in some of your lives right now, drawing you to Himself, pleading with you to open your heart so that He might come in, changing you. Jesus. How many of us know that name? We say it in vain. Our city's named after, my, not my city, but your city's named after it. But how many of us know Jesus today? Do you love Him? Do you know Him? He is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the King of glory, the great I Am, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Nothing in this world was made except through the power of Jesus Christ. In Him is life. His light shines in all dark places. My friend, God loved you so much, he sent his son. And Jesus died willingly on a cross. Three days later, he rose from the dead. He is alive right now. He's in glory. He's coming back again, and he will judge the world. And I want you to have Jesus in your heart so that when that happens, you can be with him. The Bible says we'll reign with him as heirs and joint heirs in his kingdom. The Bible says he's gone to prepare a place for us. The Bible says that we're going to be uh, we're going to be judged on the deeds of our life. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, my friends. So there must be a, there must be a penalty for sin. There has to be a payment for the sin that we've committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can't pay it. Jesus paid the price for us. And uh, unfortunately, if we reject Jesus now, He's going to reject us in eternity and we will be we will be responsible for, for that full payment of sin, that full payment of rebellion that we have committed against God for a lifetime. And it will cost us our soul. I don't want that for anyone. My friends, God is faithful. He is the name above every name. Choose this day who you will serve, Christ Church. 
You guys are trying to change the name of the city. You're trying to take Jesus out of everything. Christian bookstores are going out of business. We have mosques that are becoming very big and very populated. Other religions we're being kind to, we're being mindful of. We want to be sensitive to Muslims, but we want to turn our backs towards Christians. We want to persecute Christianity. Your prime minister doesn't have a problem putting on a hijab, but won't even acknowledge that Christians exist. How is that? She wants to be a chameleon, but she's disrespecting Christians. I'm not a New Zealander, I can say that. We have freedom of expression. The truth is Jesus loves everyone. Jesus is the way. Jesus is light. And in him there is no darkness. And God wants to pick you up, breathe life into your soul, forgive you for your sin, and change everything about you. But you will not find peace in darkness. You will not find peace. My friends, Jesus is the way. You guys have one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Incredible scenery. Incredible beauty all around you. And yet we deny the one who created all of it. We deny the, the painter of the canvas. We deny, or deny the designer, the architect of the, of the world. How is it that the rings of a tree can tell you its age? The DNA of your body can tell you everything about you. It's encoded. It's programmed. God, in his infinite knowledge, in his infinite wisdom, outside of time, space, and matter, created you and designed you as the most advanced machine on earth. And yet we think we come from apes. It's insanity. Evolution can't create a masterpiece, my friends. It doesn't exist. We were created in the image of God. We were formed by His hands with love, with a design to have a relationship with you, to know that He cares about you, my friend. Jesus loves you. I encourage you guys to just read your Bible, seek the Lord while He may be found, call upon Him while He is near, hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. He is coming back. The time is late. The night is far spent. Do you know him? What will we say when we stand before an eternal God? Some of us are closer to death than others, but any of us could die at any moment. From the dust we came to the dust we return, Jesus is king, and he will judge us on the actions of our life. There must be a payment. Jesus died. He gives us the payment. By the shedding of his blood, we can be forgiven. We can be atoned for. The blood of Christ can cleanse us from unrighteousness and wash our sin. As white as snow, we can be changed, transformed by the renewing of a mind. We can be made new, righteous with God, friends of God. But if we deny Him, we reject Him, we are responsible and accountable for the full weight of sin that we carry through life. And we will have to pay with our eternal soul. Your soul is eternal. It's going to be in heaven or hell for all of eternity. The Bible says where the worm dieth not, the fire and flame. It's a difficult subject, but we must discuss these things. We must approach these ideas with a mature heart and ask God to speak His truth to us. Train our children up in the way that we should go so that when they're old, they will not turn away. They won't go into the world. They're not going to want to go to drugs and alcohol and strange women and partying and all this stuff, they're not going to want to go into that because they're going to know that the fullness of their life, the, the purpose by which they were created, the significance of their soul, it's going to be found in Jesus. And they're going to know that. They're not going to need to try substances to heal their soul and to find answers through that because they're hurting inside. God is the only one who can heal. The medicine of this world... It, it only masks it for a moment. See, even Tylenol. You take Tylenol, I don't know what you call it here. The pain reliever, you get a headache, you take a pain reliever. What does it do? It's not getting rid of your headache. It's making it where you can't feel it. So we go out to the bar, we drink alcohol. It's not getting rid of the pain in your heart. It's making it where you can't feel it. We're masking our pain through promiscuous living. We're masking the hurt and the depression and the, the burdens of our soul with unruly living, unrighteous living, and God is saying, come back to me. Run to me. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. And he's saying, he'll give you rest today, my friends. He will heal your soul. He'll unburden the weight that you're carrying. He'll give you a new yoke. You see, a long time ago, you would have an oxen that would, that would pull a cart, and they would have a yoke on the oxen, 
and the trucks would have to walk in agreement or they would, they would it would cause a lot of problems they had to walk in agreement and the yoke had to be evenly distributed and Jesus is saying I can give you a new yoke the weight that you're carrying is too heavy it's too much you don't have to carry it it's weighing you down come to me he's saying come to me and I'll give you a new yoke and it will be a lighter load he'll carry the weight that you're carrying he'll carry it for you he'll ease your burdens he'll cleanse your soul he'll heal the wounds that you carry he'll help you to walk in agreement with him that yoke that you're carrying will be in agreement with the Lord and two walk together unless they be in agreement. We must walk hand in hand together as a body of Christ. If we're Christians out here, we have to be in one mind and one accord. We can't be contentious and divided and argumentative over every little difference of doctrine. We have to stand together, not in ecumenicalism, not all roads lead to heaven. There is only one way. His name's Jesus. But those who are truly Jesus, who belong to him, those who are really belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to be bound in unity in the body of Christ. Because souls out here are hurting and broken and we have to be together in this fight. The devil wants to turn us against each other. We have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. We have a, a form and a fashion. We have a mindset of godliness, but our hearts are far from God. Even in the Bible, I think it was Isaiah, it said, my people profess or it was a con they confess me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, or something like this. I'm going to read some scripture to you, my friends. We're going to read from the book of Colossians. Some of you haven't read your Bible in a long time. I'm going to read it to you. Paul is writing. It says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. That's what we want to do. We want to walk worthy of the Lord. How do we do that? We can't do it in our own strength or in human striving. It's through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that we're able to walk worthy of the Lord. Being fruitful in every good work. How do we bear fruit unto righteousness? How do we bear fruit in this life? God must live in us. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If we're rooted in the, in, the, in the word of God, we're standing on his truth. We're the branches. Everything's fed from God. Everything comes from God in our life. We're submitted to his will. We bear good fruit, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. How do we increase in knowledge? Not in worldly knowledge. The Bible says, the wisdom of the wise shall surely be brought low. In 1 Corinthians 1, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness, but to those who are perishing is... Uh, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved is the power of God, or those who are saved. So worldly wisdom is foolishness unto God. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. We must pray for each other, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. What is our inheritance, my friends? Our inheritance is life eternal with God. Life eternal. He's inviting, he wants to adopt you into his kingdom so you can be an heir and a joint heir in the kingdom of God, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the invisible of the invi who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him, Jesus, and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in him, that in all things he might have the preeminence. She's so cute. Hello. Hello. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. See, he wanted everything to come through Jesus. It began with Jesus. It's going to end with Jesus. Through Christ, all things are made. They consist. They exist. Everything is in Jesus. 
and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. What is to reconcile? To reconcile us. When we're born into sin, we're enemies of God. Through the blood of Jesus, we're brought into reconciliation. We're made right with the Father through Jesus as he forgives us for our sins. My friends, I'm pleading with you today to turn from your rebellion, turn to the Lord, find life and life more abundantly. It says, having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him I say, whether they be in he things in heaven or things in the earth. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. God bless you. Through sin we have become alienated. We have become isolated from God. We have been separated from God through our sin. And we're born into sin. It's what we do. It's what we know. It's what we love. It tastes delicious. But God is saying there's a better way. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. And he's saying that by him all things can be reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, we must continue in the faith, grounded and settled, being not moved away from the hope of the gospel which we have heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, where I, Paul, am made a minister. Paul's writing this letter. And it says, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery. This is beautiful what Paul is writing. It's beautiful language. It's poetry. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his, to his saints. Two, three verses left. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Come close. When we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. How do we present ourselves perfect in Christ Jesus? A few verses before it says we become reconciled to God through the blood of Jesus. He took the certificate of debt. The ordinance. He took the list of ordinances against us and he nailed it to the cross. Covered it in his blood. By his stripes we can be healed. Whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Where also I labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. My friends, the beauty of God's word, if we open it up, we read it, we believe it, we apply it to our life, being not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Not hearing and listening only, but applying it to our life. Daily walking in the truth of God. Allowing Him to change us. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Cleansing our hearts. He said, draw near to me. Draw nigh to God. He will draw near, nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's, that's exactly what the Bible says. I'm not making this up. It's exactly the way the Bible puts it. Without Jesus, we are sinners. Without Jesus, we are lost. Without Jesus, we're broken. But when he takes us, he cleanses us from sin. We're saved by grace through faith. You can shake your head, brother. You can leave and keep walking, but God loves you. He'll find you where you're at. There's a reason why you're listening to this message today. When are we going to stop running from God? He's not going to hold us down and force us to love him and live for him. But one day we will be accountable for the testimony of our life and what we have done. Do we know Jesus? Does Jesus know us? Choose this day who you will serve, Christ Church. It's an easy thing to walk through life and strive for human acceptance, strive for social proof, social acceptance, belonging to a group that's bigger than yourself, but there's nothing more fulfilling than belonging to the body of Christ. There's nothing more deeply satisfying than knowing that the creator of heaven and earth loves you and cares about you, that he's in control of your life, that he's leading you day by day, that you can have confidence that no matter what happens, he's going to take care of you. Not just about the blessing of God, but the provision of God. That we can trust in him knowing that when times get tough, he's not going to leave us stranded or abandoned. Gentlemen, God loves you. 
draw near to him. He'll draw near to you, my friends. I ran from God for a long time. I did a lot of crazy stuff. I made a lot of mistakes. Don't be like me. But even in the midst of my, my failings and my, my meanderings, God was still faithful and he brought me back. I made a ton of mistakes. But God, he will always leave the 99 to find the one. He'll send you to the end of this earth. And that is my goal in life. As, I, as I'm a preacher of the gospel, an evangelist called by the mercy and the grace of God, that I will run to the ends of this earth if I have to, and that's my goal, that's what I've been doing, but I will run to the end of this earth to find you where you're at, to plead for your soul, and, 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 and ask you to come back to him before it's too late. Because every soul is precious to him. Every soul is precious to God. You are not forgotten. He knows the hair on your head. The Bible says before you were in your mother's womb, he formed you with, your, with his own hands. Before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you. He's calling you out of sin. He's calling you to come to repentance, to confess with your mouth that he's Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's always the ones who need a touch from God the most that are the most bitter. That want to curse God. That hate God. Because deep inside they're like, where is God at? If God loves me, if God cares about me, where is he at? Why is all this stuff happening to me? My friends, bad stuff happens because of sin. Bad things happens because of rebellion. Because we're going against God. Because we've abandoned God. We've rejected God. That's why bad things happen. He's not going to force himself upon you. He's not going to hold you down and force you to love him or serve him. The truth is, sometimes innocent people, a lot of times, innocent people suffer because of the sin of other evil people. Bad things happen. But in the midst of bad things, God is faithful. The Bible never said he would fix your problems, but he said he'll give you peace in the midst of them. And he'll be a way which is good and holy and right, a way in the wilderness, a highway in the desert. Manna from heaven, water from the rock, he'll take care of you. God can be your supplier. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything else should be added unto you. It means if you seek the face of God, he'll take care of every moment of every day for the rest of your life. You'll never be forgotten. You'll never be stranded or abandoned. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He will take care of you. Just like he's taking care of me, I'm living it day by day. I left my job, my career, I have an education, I was doing something cool, making some pretty good money. I left all of that so I could travel and tell people about Jesus. We've been to a lot of dangerous places, we've met some amazing people. My favorite part about all of it is being able to hold broken children. People who have been in a lot of very bad and difficult circumstances and finding these innocent little people and picking them up and hugging them and loving them in a way that Jesus wants to love them. And the love of God can live through us, be demonstrated through us. Because a lot of people around the world, they've only, been bro they've only been loved in broken and imperfect ways. You go to the, the gypsy community in Bulgaria, these little girls, they've only been loved through abuse. That's the only love they know is through sexual abuse. So to even try to love them in a, in a way that's good and godly and pure, they don't understand it. It's, they've been perverted into thinking, even at a small age, it's heartbreaking. But this is what happens when we fall into rebellion, into a rejection of God. We go against the ways of God. The truth becomes perverted. It becomes changed. It gets distorted and twisted against the ways of God. And God can take your broken identity, your distorted thinking. We're looking at life through a broken lens. He can take our thoughts and He can renew them. He can heal your soul. He can give you the mind of Christ. The Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And He'll help you to think in a way that's healthy and good. We have a lot of unhealthy behaviors, a lot of unhealthy internal dialogue. We call ourselves a lot of unhealthy things, a lot of negative things. We form our identity around these broken, negative emotions. And then we say, well, if God is real, then why did he create me this way? But the truth is, God never messed up. Our, our, our thinking has become clouded and broken through the thoughts and the internal dialogue that the enemy has put inside of us. We're believing it. We're t laying hold on it. We're taking ownership of the negative dialogue. But God is saying he'll give you a new thought, a new mind, a new heart. 
He'll show you that you're loved. He'll show you that you're a, a, the masterpiece of God, that you're created in His image, that there was no accident. And He'll help you become the best form of yourself. He'll bring you back out of that broken, distorted self-identity or that, that, that way of thinking and help you to live in the way that He originally designed you before the enemy got a hold of you. My friends, repentance is only a decision away. But it's going to cost you for a lifetime. The cost is high. We must take up our cross. We must follow Him. We have to put our hand to the plow. But we're saved by grace through faith. And He's saying, come to me. Come home. Stop running. Rebellion's not worth it. Run to Jesus before it's too late, my friends. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent for your sin. Believe the gospel so that you might be saved. Quick gospel message. I'm going to take a break. God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son. Jesus died on a cross for you. Through the shedding of his blood, your sins can be paid for and forgiven. We all need a payment for sin because we're born into sin. Through one man, Adam, sin into the world. Through one man, Jesus Christ, sin can be taken away. And he paid that price. We're all born into sin as an enemy of God. Through Jesus Christ, we can be reconciled to God. We can be adopted into his kingdom. He'll find you as an orphan, a spiritual orphan on the street, and he'll bring you home. He's saying, come to me, live with me in my mansion. I'll wrap you in a robe of righteousness. I'll give you a new life. I'll let you sit at my table and eat with me, have fellowship with me in a spiritual sense. And then he'll be there for you every moment. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. You can be an heir and a joint heir, a child of God, a daughter of the Most High, a daughter of the King, my friend. Jesus loves you. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know where you're going. I don't know what damage has been caused to your soul today, my friends, but God sees your pain. He wants to heal you. Jesus is the way. We must repent or we will perish. Repent means we change our heart, we change our mind, we turn around, we walk towards the face of Jesus. We turn from sin and we walk towards the Lord. We can't, we can't go on this journey without Him. He must put His Spirit inside of us. We have to have that new life. We have to have that empowerment by the Holy Spirit to live in a way that's holy. But when we turn around, we seek the face of God, He will give us that new life that we need. He'll give us that strength in the Spirit of God to overcome sin and to live in a way that's pleasing unto Him. And we become slaves of righteousness. No longer sinners, but now saints of God. We still sin, but we're no longer identified by that sin. It's not a part of who we are. It might be something that we do sometimes, but we hate our sin. We seek righteousness. If you would like to pray with us, please come. If you would like to ask us questions, if you need a, a Bible, if you can't afford a Bible, I'll go and find a bookstore, I'll buy you a Bible, whatever it takes. If you're hungry, you need food, whatever it might be, let us show the love of God today to you. God bless you, my friends. God is faithful.